Haven. Coming to you from Long Island Sound. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Been out for about two hours now. Gone, what, 38 miles, Jim? Uh, 47 miles. We've Whoa! Gone in two hours and five minutes. 47 miles. That's awesome. We're on 126 miles today, and we should arrive at our, home, our summer home in uh, Warwick, Rhode Island. Hopefully, within minutes of arrival, we'll get to see our grandkids. Passed a lot of traffic a minute ago. Ferries going back and forth from, I think, New Haven to Long Island. We saw some tugboats. Now we're out here all by ourselves. Heading east, northeast. That's sun, man. That When we took off at uh, 6 a.m., the sun was like, boom, right in front of us. It's like, go to the light, go to the light, which was east, so almost didn't need a compass at that point. Um, yeah, it's, it's sort of sunny, sort of. It's, it's fine. It's good weather, good weather today, so we're happy. Compared to yesterday. Well, yesterday started out really, really nice. Blue Boy is down in the bed. Um, he is not to come up on the bridge when we've got long distances because he's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> Love him dearly, but can't be dealing with a dog when you're trying to do this kind of stuff. How do you like that water this morning? How do you like that sun glistening on the water? Pretty oh, cool, it's huh? beautiful. God, man, God is good. Look at that nature. <laughs> Oh, we're getting some hearts, honey. Getting some hearts? I always love getting hearts. I think that's New Haven over there. You show them that? Uh, I will show you New Haven. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's definitely New Haven. By and large, it is going to get very bouncy, but you can see it better. So, there's New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So calm. It's like being out on a lake. yesterday as you come across the very tip of New Jersey which is Sandy Hook and then there's this body of water before you get into uh, New York Harbor and it was a big mess of chop and wind uh, we sustained a little damage on our Isaac glass here so I have to wear my gloves because there's some wind blowing in here cold air and we damaged the windshield a little bit well not a little bit but well, actually we cracked the windshield down here when we came slamming down on a couple big waves yeah, that's a badly cracked windshield right here, so that's a repair for Rhode Island. Um, Find a good glass, man. We found that. We found a really nice marina, nice people um, in Marinec, New York. Um, we ended up going over on the uh, east side of Long Island Sound um, and found a marina, Nichols Marina. People were so nice and helpful. And three of them to tie us up when we... By the time we were uh, making tracks, after lunch we got our second wind and we were going to see how far we could go. Then about 3 o'clock the winds picked up like 30 knots and that really makes it difficult. So we called a couple of marinas and uh, I think two or three of them were closed or had no room. And then we found, uh, what was it, Nelson or? Nichols. Nichols Marina. Or Nichols Yacht Harbor. Yeah, Nichols something. Yacht Harbor. Really nice. And they had, they had three guys come down to meet us because this boat is so tall. It's kind of like a billboard, acts like a couple sails, so the wind kept blowing us. We had a hard time getting in the slip, but that's some really nice people helping us out. We got tied up, went down, had a little dinner, Captain Morgan had <laughs> calmed the nerves, and uh, it was a good eat. We had a, Seth was asleep by seven, I made it till eight, because we woke up at five to be underway by six. Yeah, it was close to 
closer to six thirty, quarter to seven, I think, when we finally got <laughs> got going this morning. It takes but, a little longer to get out. Yeah, I, I just don't like to rush. We've got too much to think about. I want to make sure we're uh, methodical and that we uh, we do everything we need to do. We actually developed a checklist. Um, we Which we also have to remember to look at the checklist that we developed and check things off. We developed a checklist, but I can't say we're always amazing about using it. But, but uh, you know, we figured airline pilots can fly, like, for decades and, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles, and they go through a checklist every single flight. So that's what... Uh, so maybe we could learn from them. <laughs> Instead well, of writing we made the, it. We made it. <laughs> we did use a checklist leaving Cape May. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at some of it, but some of it I don't know what to do. Hey, Captain Buzz. Good morning. Good morning, Captain Buzz. Beautiful. We sustained a little more damage, Buzz. It was 42 degrees. We had to roll these up because I couldn't see. We started to roll it up and it cracked. So, so you have to find a good Isinglass, man. Gloves this morning. Hi, Sue. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're enjoying Long Island Sound. Board floating home. And can't wait to let y'all know when we make it to Rhode Island, our destination for the summer, so we can have fun with our grandkids. Two of them. The other one will be growing like a weed in Pennsylvania, and I'll be missing that, but we are so fortunate that Jim can move his office, and we can move our home and work and live where we choose to live. So there's the sun glistening on Long Island Sound. Smooth as glass compared to yesterday afternoon. Oh Holy baby, this is, this is smooth. This is nice. This is beautiful. We're pretty much going due east, huh Jim? Pardon me? Going due east, it looks we like. We're going east right now, 25 miles an hour. We've covered 40, almost 50 miles already. 50 miles this morning. That's not too shabby. <laughs> what time is it? Is your friend say? Uh, 8.50. 850 and we've covered 50 miles. How about that? A little bit chilly up here. Gotta wear the wear the old Eagles gloves because we got wind blowing in here. Yeah, I think we're gonna take the Eagles flag right into Patriots country. Give Dave one, Negri just joined. Door. Jim? What? Dave Negri just joined. I can hear you. Dave. Dave, how you doing? Contractor Secret Weapon Dave, the king of title insurance. How you doing, buddy? Good morning, Long Island Sound. The only traffic we've seen here is a ferry that goes back and forth from Connecticut over to Long Island and maybe a fishing boat, a tugboat. Um, what's up, Jim? I just wonder, I don't know if that's land or some kind of thing. It could probably land at this point, but it's pretty far out there. Smooth waters. How do you have the strength to signal a broadcast so well from the open sea? Questions well, for us. I'll tell you what, when I, uh, because I'm going to work on the boat wherever we are, I really had to make sure that I'm always going to have internet. So I installed a, uh, a cell phone antenna high up on the radar arch that's got a signal booster. So as long as we can pick up a, uh, I we use Verizon, as long as we pick up a Verizon cell signal, it'll boost it. And um, I use something called a Verizon Jetpack. It's small, it's about the size of a deck of cards, but it acts like a wireless router. So we're like we have a generator running right now that's keeping everything, you know, either heated or air conditioning, keeps the refrigerator running, so the generator runs the whole time we're out. So we actually have I'm sure, you know, I I'm guessing we're about two miles offshore. Yeah, I don't know how you tell how far offshore we are. I'm just guessing at this point. But anyway, as long as we got a Verizon signal we can boost it and that feeds a, a cell signal to everywhere on the boat. So which was interesting when we were in um, Cape May most marinas provide Wi-Fi, but uh, my my system that I set up had stronger Wi-Fi than the marina. So 
knock, uh, well, there's no wood here except wood grain plastic, but knock wood, I should always be able to do my business, my calls and interviews uh, with the cell service I have on the boat. Oh, whoops, I was advised to turn the phone this way. I keep forgetting uh, to do that. Oh, I hope people aren't busy now. Is that a better view if I turn it this way, people? Joe McCready. Hi, Joe. How you doing, Joe? Thanks for joining us from Long Island. We're here in Long Island Sound, heading east and down into Block Island Sound and then north up into the Narragansett Bay to our summer home. Uh-oh, can't turn it back, turn it back. I'm being advised to turn it back. <laughs> All right, that's better. We don't. We haven't done a lot of Facebook Live. I think I read somewhere where if you're gonna turn it, you have to turn like some kind of a setting oh. so that it doesn't appear sideways like before you start. Oh, Deb said you have to keep the same orientation from when you started the broadcast. Oh, Got it, so if I you, had Deb. started it horizontally, I could have kept it that way. Man, people are probably taking their computers and turning them on their sides. I don't think they're that excited to see our broadcast, but... <laughs> Betsy, our plan is to live on the boat for about 18 months. Four or five Jim. years. Yeah, don't listen to Jim. 18 <laughs> months. So it's summer in Rhode Island, fall in on the Chesapeake Bay, winter going down the intercoastal waterway into Florida, and then spring coming back up to the Chesapeake, and summer of 2018 on the Chesapeake. And that's what we don't know after that. After that, we just got to see what life has in store for Jim and stuff. Let me tell you, a little more than a year ago, we had no idea we'd be doing this, but we're pretty happy. We're both pretty happy we made this decision, and we're going to live on this boat. All our belongings are in a storage unit for now. Well, except what we have on the boat. <laughs> except this whole boat. That's our belongings. Looking forward to living simply. No more shopping and buying silly things that we don't need, but just enjoying the experiences of life and being able to spend summer near our daughter who we haven't, who basically went off to college and we haven't, hasn't lived near us since then. And our two grandkids, who, two of our grandkids, I gotta get used to saying that. Um, so we can just move around. Next winter, we'll be kind of near Jim's parents, an hour, hour and a half from them, and um, it'll be nice to be able to spend some time with them. We're so, so fortunate that Jim and I have both our parents, our grandkids have great grandparents, so that's really, really cool. Um, oh, you think we should be doing a TV miniseries, huh? Is this a TV? <laughs> <laughs> we got to figure out how to set up a YouTube more work channel. To do. <laughs> I've been doing lots of uh, watching other people's uh, YouTube channels and blogs and There's vlogs. There's a ton of people living on boats. There's just... people living on boats, living in RVs, traveling around. Um, young families. There's a family. They're down in the Caribbean right now. Boat fam. Um, two little boys, about three and five, and they're just living on their trawler and. Um, just letting their kids keep up with the Joneses kind of life. Um, MJ, let me tell you what's good with us. We're living on a boat and we're moving it. We're moving our home and... I'll tell you what was kind of cool yesterday after, uh, 107, what are you, 172 miles? Yeah. And, um, we, you know, we went through New York. We went through a really rough patch of wind and, and uh, waves and then again at the end of the trip... And by the time we tied up, about a half an hour later, we were down in the cab and Steph was making dinner. It's like, no matter where we go or what we experience, we just go downstairs and we're home. So, And I'll weird. be honest with you. Here was dinner last night after a little bit of a stressful <laughs> day. Enjoyable, exciting day, but stressful. Dinner was... Chips and salsa. Chips and salsa. It was a salsa with cheese, so you got a little, little protein in there and you got your salsa, which is your vegetable. Um... So that was dinner, but that was all I could handle. That was all and, I cared about. And we opened one of the many bottles of wine people brought to our Bon Voyage party. Oh, Pinot Noir for dinner. Yeah, that was good. Good. The 
yeah, some little island of some sort up. Yeah, I don't know what that is. up I ahead. I can't see it yet. I'm not. Um, Oh, this is down to 101. Okay, so we got about 100 miles to go. We've already been 50, so we really should have more like 75 miles no, to go. Yeah, not, that's not accurate. Oh, MJ was listening to your marketing app this week. What's that? MJ was listening to your marketing app this week. So. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm new to Facebook Live, and my daughter informed me I talk too much. Um, I love how my daughter's so blunt with me. I honestly love it, but uh, I'm just going to talk anyway. Yeah, Jim and I, Deb, we keep going. This is our life. When, when are we going to get used to the fact that this is it? We are home. Like when we were stuck, stuck. I hate to say stuck in Cape May because Cape May, New Jersey is a really nice town. But we were kind of our home address for four days was Cape May, New Jersey. And that was our address. That's, that wasn't a vacation. That was our home. So, yeah, this is going to take a while to get used to. And that's okay. I remember years ago, we bought our house 28, well, I guess we're getting up 29 years ago? 28, not 29 years, I can't remember. Um, and when we first bought it, I felt like I was on vacation living in my own home. So I, I didn't care. I was just having so much fun thinking, wow, I have a house and a yard and a place for my kids to just go out and play and a house to fix up and make a home. and. <clears throat> that was a vacation for us and right now our home again just feels like a vacation all the time we are so so blessed um, God it's good all the time we have some kind of obstruction in our way so well, I mean it's quite a ways off but we're just trying to figure out what that is as we move along some kind of an island it's up here but it's not yeah. in sight yet we'll go around quite sure we don't want to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to hit it. Feels like it's warming up a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure. A little breezy here with our cracked windshield. Whoops. I don't know if you can see the crack. Uh, <laughs> that's enough. I'm letting more air in. I need to stop. Uh, a friend of mine suggested duct tape, but that might obstruct the view, so. That looks ugly. Yeah. And it will look totally Tacky. No duct tape on my boat, except and in the bilge. <laughs> I wanted to uh, bring some bikes along so we could go bike riding and just tie them up down there. People do that. My husband said, no, it's not going to, our boat's not going to look like that. So, yeah, we'll figure something out. Little ride on Long Island Sound. Couple of vessels out there, not much. It's quiet out here this morning. Probably another month or two, this place will be buzzing with lots of boats. Yeah, clear packing tape. Oh, I do. I think I might have some clear packing tape actually. Now, might need replacing, but clear packing tape will keep some of that cold air out. Southeast. We want to go north. Are right? sure. you want to make I'm sure? sure. I'll just take the island on the starboard side. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that island out there. We've got to avoid it. Is that Gilligan's Island? <laughs> Three hour tour here, folks. Looks like 40 feet of water on the port side of the island, so, uh, Hey, MJ says let's share a marketing tip. Whoa, is that hazy? Our, what is today? Thursday morning marketing tip. Try face, Facebook Live. Face your fears. Just say yes. It's never as bad as you think it is. We faced a lot of our fears yesterday, I'll tell you. <laughs> and we, we went through it. I'm so glad we did. There's this, there's this place in New York Harbor actually called Hell's Gate. Hell. And it's Oh, Hellgate, and it's where all these rivers converge, and there's bridges, 
and actually you can look in the water is swirling it's wavy it's choppy it's like all you this can't stuff. see all his hand motions i'm, I'm not showing him your hand oh, motions okay. honey but you can tell them about it but it's a combination <laughs> of whirlpools waves churning they tell you not to go through there with a sailboat you need power in fact some power boats if they're underpowered can get just get thrown around but we motored through it but uh that was a fear of ours because we did a lot of research that actually the night before we went through there i'm watching youtube of people that went through hell gate <laughs> and i'm seeing all these people and i'm thinking okay i think we're gonna be all right but anyway he oh said, he says i think we're gonna be all right he told me we're gonna be fine don't uh, worry about it we'll, we'll power right through didn't want my first mate to worry but no seriously. another thing when you're the leader you got to have confidence that's right i mean the boat weighs about forty-two thousand pounds got 960 horsepower so i knew we'd be okay but but it was a, it seriously when you see that and you instinctively know you're going to be okay but yet you have to go through it and go oh my god i just did that so just say yes just say yes he is promoting his new book so when that comes out may 15th he, i don't know if he remembers why i think that's a significant date but um <laughs> it's your birthday yeah i just realized so that. he's releasing oh he just realized we've been married 37 years that that's he's for the marketing too mj MJ, I want you to realize, even though I just promoted my book, that was the marketing tip. Yes, it was seed planting. So the book was, I mean, the tip he gave was about facing your fears, which then led into his book release. So he can wrap probably five tips into one. Motoring along. That's weird. That like sun glistening look is well, uh, kind of changing. Oh, the water looks so pretty on this side. This over here be our starboard side. I don't know if the glass there looks all dirty from salt, but um, whoa, and I'm a little wobbly. So, real pretty view over here. goes and goes. Anybody know how Long Island is? How, how long Long Island is? i got to research that. It's quite long. You can imagine driving it if you live out in one end of it. If you're going out to the end of it, honey, you got a you got, you mansion. you got a chauffeur driving you out there, I think. Not where the Hamptons is or where people have their summer homes or... All right, Jim, what can you say to someone who is ready to give up after they gave it their all? They haven't given it their all. <laughs> oh, man. He's they tough. Haven't. There, there, there's, well, if you give up, you give up, but that means you haven't given it your all. And it, it Find just, a new way. Find a new way. It possibly means whatever you've been doing uh, is not the right thing to do. That's a good, I mean, it depends what it is, but most, most places I would look at your branding and your positioning uh, and I don't know who's asking that, and don't tell me because I don't want to cloud what I'm going to say. But in most people that I work with, they are—they're um, not willing to put enough skin in the game. So, for example, when I started my business, I was 12 months before I got my first client. I took us probably another 30 to 40 thousand dollars in debt funding my business, keeping our dream alive. And uh, we incurred a lot of debt, and so somebody could say, well, that's not working. Well, guess what? I knew I'd be successful, but I didn't know the exact day or time it was going to happen. But every, every week and month that went by that I was sort of in despair, I kept telling myself, how ridiculous would it be for me to quit right now after I just put in six months? Seventh, eighth month, how ridiculous would it be for me to quit now when I just put in eight or nine months? And then all of a sudden, all that work that I've done for the last 11 months paid off. I got my first client, second, third, fourth, and I took off from there. So there's probably some, there could be something that's not right in your marketing. But my, there's another reason. I'm betting you're not uh, you're not putting enough skin in the game because that means if your product is good, your service is good. There's just not enough people that know about it. If you really are as good as you say you are, and there's a need for what you have, then. That's a clue right there. You got to do the right marketing. You got to put money in the game. Create a business. How about that? I blew that. Did he, he probably hung up. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I don't know. 
Buffalo. All right, getting a little closer to this island. It's an island. Decide. Decide will fix what's going on. It's like a checkup from the neck up. And by the way, you can get it for free, and all I'm going to ask you to do is pay for the postage, but you go to decideforsuccessbook.com. Decide, F-O-R, successbook.com. You read that book, and that'll I share every, every piece of crap that I was dealing with and head trash and a lot of what I did to get over it. That book will help you, believe me. successbook.com You get a free oh, copy. Add book on the end of that. Looking for him. There it is. It's 
not, I wasn't watching him, I was recording my book. He was recording his book. I don't mean to sound like he was supposed to be watching him, but, um, oh boy, MJ is after the tips. What are some free ways to market one's brand using guerrilla tactics or not so guerrilla tactics? All right, he's thinking, thinking uh, while he powers. I'm thinking if I want to be harsh or not. Ah, <laughs> what is that? That's a bunch of rocks. MJ, do you want the truth? Just watch out. There's a bunch of rocks. I think there's a buoy up there. There's a buoy up here we got to watch. we got to head for that island. It's so a little ways off, but we're getting closer. It's right out in the middle of the sound here. And a whole bunch of rocks. Um, ah, she's gonna take a. Um, she said, "I want the truth. I can handle the truth." <laughs> You want me on? All right. I'll you want me on that wall? You need me on that wall. If you're looking for free marketing that's going to work, that's kind of an oxymoron. If it's free, everybody would be doing it, and everybody would be get tons of exposure and value. The fact of the matter is, if you're all over Facebook and Twitter and doing this and that, you're you might be in front of however big your audience is, but it doesn't mean you're in front of decision makers. You need to identify who your audience is, who is your perfect target customer, what's your message to them, and where's the urgency to buy, and then you have to develop a marketing program that's going to do that. One of the first things I did years, many years ago when I was uh, getting No Hassle newsletters off the ground, I'm heading toward the buoy. When I, had to, uh, I made a decision to go market myself. I took a booth at this national conference where a thousand of my perfect customers were going to be, and it cost me $7,500 to do that, which I didn't have. I had to borrow it, but I actually came out with about $5,000 worth of business, and over the next year, I'm sure I recouped more of that. But what I'm telling you is you have to be willing to put it out there in advance, grow the audience, and look at it this way. If you were to borrow, let's say if you were to borrow $10,000, Otherwise, you, you'll be growing at a, at a turtle's pace. Sorry to be blunt like that. We are on Long Island Sound heading... Oh my God, look at those rocks. Yeah, those are some nasty rocks. I don't know if you can see them that we would not want to hit. Whoa, baby, you better be paying attention. Um, there's that cute little island. I think there's a little lighthouse and a house on it. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Um, so... We are on Long Island Sound on our way to Warwick, Rhode Island in the Narragansett Bay where we will be spending our summer. We live on a boat and we are, that is where named. That, where does MJ live? No, that's Blaine Olkers that's asking. Um, MJ, don't you travel? Where does she MJ, live? I think she travels around if I recall correctly. Um, so that is a cute little island in the middle of Long Island Sound with lots of rocks around it. And there's some big freighter or something over there. Um, so we are on our way to Rhode that Island to spend cool. our summer. I know. We are, we're so fascinated with this little island. I don't know if you can see. Oh, you live in D.C. Where? NJ lives in D.C. September 27th, 28th, and 29th. The next Dream Business Academy is in Rhode Island. You can drive there in six, seven hours, I'm guessing. And right now, you can get a ticket for $4.97. It's half price. You will learn in, in three days everything you need to know to grow your business. That should be the investment you make. We are in 63 miles. Yeah, feet of water. So we're good. We're, we're in some deep water. Can you see that cute little island? It's got a little lighthouse and a little house and lots of rocks around it. Um, and way out there is some freighter sh ship of some sort. And Jim's paying attention to where we're going. We're heading east out of Long Island Sound. I have to keep adding the sound part on. And um, up the Narragansett Bay. 
Long Island's over there. We're coming, we're moving our way through uh, Long Island Sound. There we are, buoy 15. You guys, I'm sure, boated out here. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Beautiful morning, calm waters. This is a nice ride. My navigation skills are quite fine. Well, sort of. <laughs> we got a lot to learn. <laughs> but we're managing. Right now we're in 87 feet of water. I'm sure Bob would want to see the wake. <laughs> yes, Bob, this is probably. How's that looking? There we go. All right, this is for Bob Palmer. Whoa, I better not fall on her myself. There we go. Nice. <laughs> cool. Uh, we charged enough. All right. Heading east. A oh, oil tanker over there. Okay. viewers have any questions for us? <laughs>